Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to an update on COVID-19 and what's happening in Eau Claire County as well as across the state. We had to move to Monday, Wednesday, Friday media briefings, but today the governor made an announcement related to this safer at home order extension, and we thought it important to come back and talk to all of you about, about that order, what we know now, and um, a little bit about what's happening in Eau Claire. The situation is changing quickly. That announcement just happened this afternoon, so we are also processing through and digesting that um, as, as all of you are as well. The governor's order um, does extend safer at home until May 26th. I will walk through some of the changes that were made in that order. We do know that it's been working, and it's important for us to all remember that the goal with this disease that none of us are immune to is really to keep the circle small of people that are exposed as we have new positives. The spreading of disease is something we can control, and the methods that we use are important public health methods. We'll talk more about what that means. State update for all of you. In Wisconsin, we have 3,875 positive cases as of today, an increase of 154 cases since yesterday, almost 41,000 negative tests, and 197 deaths, an increase of 15 deaths. Again, every death is significant, and every death is a family that is grieving, and, and we, we grieve with them. The reported hospitalizations for positive uh, cases that have been tested is at 1,121. About 29% of the cases that test positive are hospitalized at any point in time in Wisconsin. In Eau Claire, we continue with 22 confirmed cases, no increase from yesterday. The testing numbers are at 1,393 individuals tested in Eau Claire County, Eau Claire County residents tested. 1,304 of those tests are negative, the remainder are pending. We have a broad range of positive um, test results as far as age and a good uh, distribution in gender as well. So we are modeling like the state averages that are online very similarly. The call center yesterday did answer 30 calls. So a little bit about the new Safer at Home order. Again, it starts on April 24th, the day that the current order ends. This is order number 28 related to this incident. Um, the secretary in that order does lay out that we have had flattening of the curve for COVID-19, but we remain in a really serious situation of needing to have the spread of this disease minimized as much as possible. In order to get people back actively engaging in society, actively working, we need to make sure that they can do that and not get sick. And this is one of the strategies to do that. Taking the measures that are being taken with this order are really so that we don't have an enormous second wave once things open up. Having that would mean that we have many more sick people, many more hospitalized individuals, and more deaths in the state. It also means that employees won't be able to work those jobs that they so desperately want to go back to. The WEDIC director, the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation director, um, was part of the conference call today, and she really also indicated that Safer at Home is working, and the path has now been laid to reopen successfully in Wisconsin, but we knew, need to do that in a measured and calculated and strategic way, even though it's very frustrating to have these measures in place. Some of the changes in the new order, which will start on the 24th, include allowing some businesses and activities um, to be a bit more open than they are now. There are also things in the order that change um, some specifics around having a safer environment for those essential work sites, especially those large essential work sites, so that the employees and the customers can be safe in those environments. Um, we do with the new order, continue to need to stay in our small circle. So that 
basic premise of the order remains that your circle remains small with the people that live in your household and that you are not part of social gatherings beyond that. That we continue to practice all those basic public health measures, wash your hands, stay home when you're sick, um, and make sure that you are not spreading the disease. The non-essential businesses that are currently entirely closed beginning April 24th may be able to do some minimal basic operations, some pickup services, uh, delivery services, mail out services of their products. Again, that's very minimal expansion for those non-essential businesses. Public libraries with the new order also may have some additional curbside pickup of books and other library materials. That is also allowable with the new order. And the order does address golf courses being open. Arts and craft stores that are currently closed can offer um, curbside pickup now for things like fabric to make um, the face coverings that are being recommended for people to use when they're out and about in the community. Schools will remain closed for the rest of the academic year. K through 12 schools, um, as part of this order, are remaining closed for the rest of the academic year. And again, essential businesses, those that are defined in the previous order, are in this order given some very explicit language around cleaning, around numbers of people in their buildings at any one time, and around some necessary protections for workers. We want those essential businesses to remain open. We need them to remain open, and we need the workers there to be safe. Lots has been happening in Eau Claire County and across the state to work with essential employers to make sure their workers stay safe. This order adds some additional push to do that for places that maybe have not been um, doing those things as much as we'd like to see that happen. Outdoor work can happen on houses now as long as it's a single provider that's working on doing some basic maintenance. Um, and the, um, the basic premise of the order remains that keep your circle small, stay with your household, and only do those things that are absolutely essential, including travel. A number of times we've gotten questions recently about long-term care facilities and window visits, and I do want to say that the order doesn't explicitly address this in any new way. The current order, as it's been interpreted, does allow for window visits. Um, I have communicated in Eau Claire County again that I would really expect that our local facilities don't have that happen for very clear public health reasons. I know that's creating a lot of challenge for families and individuals, and it is very, very difficult. More difficult is when we have disease and death in those facilities where we have high-risk populations. So I will continue to ask long-term care facilities to not have that practice happening, but it is something that is not enforceable with the current order or with the new order that will start on the 24th. We continue to encourage people to go to our website. That website is coronavirus.echealthdepartment.org. If there are questions, and we know there likely will be, um, to call the call center at 715-831-7425. The new governor's order that just came out, again, doesn't start until the 24th. There is a frequently asked question document that has a lot of very good information in it that the state did put together. We will make sure both the order and the FAQ document is available. It does walk through many, many of the common questions that people may have. Again, we're still digesting this. It's something that we will be looking at. We, we truly understand that this is a, a big step um, we anticipated that the order would likely be extended for some amount of time because of the disease patterns and because of the science and the best practice that we know exists. The public health community broadly across the state did ask for the order to be extended in, to some extent and to pay attention to the fact that we need more personal protection protective equipment. We need more testing to be done to understand the extent of disease across our communities. And we need all of the resources available to do the really careful containment, those things I talked about yesterday, so that when we find positive cases, we can make sure that the spread stays as small as possible. 
Right now, we have many of those tools in Eau Claire County. We know we will likely need many, many more of those tools um, across the state in order to do the job we need to do to contain the disease once this um, society is fully opened back up. One of the reasons to do this order extension is to make sure we slowly and smartly reopen. Um, this is a step in that direction. Some additional ability to have businesses open in, is included in this, but it also maintains our circles very small so that as we get increased cases, which I anticipate we likely will with the new order, um, that those case numbers are small and that we can do the case investigation and the contact follow-up or the contact tracing that we need to do. So again, um, contact the call center or go to our website if there are questions. We'll be back tomorrow, and I'm certain that we'll have some additional information about the order and implications at that point in time. But I'm willing to answer questions now as well. Have we opened up next Friday as the restrictions been lifted? Do you think locally we would have been prepared for the surge? So the question was, if we would have fully opened up next Friday, would we locally have been prepared for the surge? As a as a, someone that looks at public health data a lot and looks at these kinds of um, disease events, the potential for disease spread if we fully opened up and allowed full um, exposure to all of the people in our community that don't have any immunity to this disease, we would have had a, a real issue with both our healthcare capacity, that surge capacity that we talk about, an increased number of people needing the healthcare facilities that are in our community, and we would have had an enormous challenge with the follow-up of cases. I would have anticipated that not immediately, but very quickly, we would have had a, an increased number of cases that would have overwhelmed both our healthcare system and our public health system. Yeah, the question is, even with the new order as presented that will start on the 24th, we'll, what will happen related to cases? I would anticipate, as I said, that we likely will continue to have cases. We've had a flattening of that, as you've all noted, only one additional this week so far. Um, with additional um, ability to be out for a variety of activities, I would anticipate that we will continue to see more. Um, again, this is a disease that the possibility of positives is everybody in our community. We won't obviously likely have everybody sick, but the possibility is there. None of us are immune to this disease. We all can get sick with it. So the possibility of people being tested and being positive is very high. And the more contact we have with each other, the more likely the spread will be. So this order loosens it up a bit. Um, I hope people continue to abide by the order so that we keep our circle small. We know that the longer it lasts, the harder that is. It's hard for all of us. Um, all of us want to be with our friends. We want to go back to the social interactions that we need and are part of our normal life. The reason for doing this a little bit longer is to keep those circles small so we decrease the, the surge, we keep it at a manageable level. Assuming we keep climbing at the pretty slow rate we do, mm -hmm. is there any reason that after this month it wouldn't be extended another month and another mm -hmm. month and another month? Yeah. Yeah, the question is with our with our slow increase over time now, what would we why would we think that we wouldn't keep extending this order? One of the reasons to the, extend the order is really to build our capacity, as I mentioned, around having enough testing happening so we know positives right away and we can get that circle small of who else is exposed. So first, we have to get that testing capacity increased. And we that has happened in the state. But we, frankly, are not seeing increased testing yet in the state. So the capacity is there. We need the actual testing to increase. And that's being worked on, but we're not there yet. So we need a little bit more time to get that to happen. 
We also need increased capacity to do that contact investigation. The person that is sick with COVID-19 doing a really strong interview of that person, making sure that they stay home in that interviewing, know, knowing every possible person that they came in close contact with so we can keep them home so that they don't spread disease if they get it. That work will take some time getting enough capacity for that next step. And that's being worked on right now by the state, as well as by all of us at the local level, getting our lists, getting training to happen, being ready for that. So when and if it happens, we're ready to go and we're not scrambling. And then the third area is really getting our personal protective equipment ready and available. So as, as we open up again, we have more people that are ill. We need more personal protective equipment for those people that will be providing health care for those individuals. Some of those people will need to be hospitalized. Some of those people will be in intensive care situations and they need to have the personal protection equipment so that they don't get sick as health care workers. So we need to have that available. We also need that kind of um, protection for the people that are doing the testing. Right now, we don't have enough of that equipment available either. So we need these weeks to do that. We also need these weeks to work with businesses so that they can safely open. So that will be the other thing that happens over the next number of weeks, both at a state level and at a local level. The Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation um, leadership talked about that issue as well, that we are expecting now businesses to be thinking about how do they make their work sites as safe as possible as people return. Um, and I know work sites have been working on that already, but now's the time to do that full force. And so I would expect that the order will be partially lifted or fully lifted in not too distant of a future. I think none of us are anticipating that this is going to go on for a, a much longer period of time the way it is now, but we need time to get those things in place. So there's been, either, even before today's extension, there was, there's been kind of increasing um, pressure maybe from legislators and business groups and that kind of thing to start to think about reopening. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what do you say to, to those those groups, I guess, about why we have to do this and, and why I guess they're wrong and, mm -hmm. and arguing that it should reopen. And and even there's even been some people talking more about, you know, how about regional reopening? How about, you know, the northern third of Wisconsin where the cases are very slim or mm -hmm. you know, whether that includes Eau Claire or not, I don't know. But, uh, you know, what about those possibilities? Yeah, a couple of questions there. So I'll start with the regional possibility of reopen or having regional ways to look at approaching the disease within Wisconsin regions. Um, the challenge with either a local order or a regional order change is, of course, we have a very transient population, a, a population that works in multiple counties or travels um, for various reasons across the state or between states. We already are struggling with some of that now, and to have a patchwork quilt of approaches is very, very difficult with a disease like this. Because we have fewer cases in some parts of the state doesn't mean that once the order lifts that we won't have disease everywhere. It's just a little bit later. So if we think about the dynamic in New York, the disease hit in New York State well before we were seeing large number of cases in Wisconsin. Very similarly, southeast and, and northeast Wisconsin were seeing many more cases initially well before, a couple of weeks before Eau Claire and this side of the state started to see cases. But now we do have cases in most counties across the state. The expectation is that we will see disease everywhere. And to have the order, have different orders in different places will be very, very difficult. Um, so while it's appealing to say, hey, there are fewer cases here, um, the disease tells us that we're not immune. And if we're open and having interactions, unless we have, um, you know, frankly, walls that keep other people out from certain parts of the state, it, it won't work. We are, we are a community a state community that interacts broadly across the state, and very few people in a given amount of time stay just in a small area. 
The additional questions were related to um, the the pressure and the, the push by a whole variety of sectors to open back up. This has been incredibly hard. It's an unprecedented move to have things closed down this way. I think nobody remembers a time where the um, individuals, families, businesses, the economy as a whole has been this impacted. It is an enormous impact. An enormous impact also would be if we had the percent of the population ill and dying that we've seen in some other countries and in other parts of the world where these kinds of public health measures have not been taken. So we learn from that. It's really harsh learning, and these measures are very difficult. It's also why I think progressively we will be seeing things where we can be smart and, and have smart strategies to reopen. We need to. We're, we're a country that needs to work, and we're a state that needs to work, and we will get there. But it's a step at a time with a disease like this, and we need the measures in place to protect people as we do that. Nobody's going to want to go back to work if they can't feel safe and protected as well. So for businesses that want to open, and, and I know they do, and we want them to open, um, we need to help them do that in a safe way. And um, there aren't many strategies to keep people safe from this disease, and that's part of the challenge. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, obviously, a more last-minute announcement of this media briefing. We appreciate people learning more about what's happening. We know things continue to change rapidly. We'll be back tomorrow to share with you what's going on tomorrow and to provide more updates. Thank you.